Hi, good evening everybody. Today I want to look at a magnetic induction problem. It's kind of a really nice problem. And I want to imagine this square loop here that I have uh, drawn on the whiteboard. The square loop here has a resistance R. It's a conductor and it has a particular resistance to it. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab it and you're going to drag it across to the right. And you're going to drag it through a region where there is a magnetic field. And we want to see what happens to it as I drag it across this region where there's a constant or a uniform magnetic field and the field's always pointing into the page. So we're going to look at a couple questions. So let's see how we solve this problem. Okay, so we're going to start with uh, two problems here. Number one is we want to graph what the force uh, that's needed in order to move this loop at constant speed from the left hand side all the way to the right hand side. So let's graph the force as a function of position. I call that position X down here at the bottom. And number two, we're going to see what is the induced current in the loop as a function of X. So once I start moving this loop in this field region, uh, we're going to see we're going to have an induced current. So let's plot what that current looks like as a function of position. All right, so let's look at this problem here. So I've got my loop. And once I'm on this outside area over here where there is no magnetic field, in order to move this loop at constant velocity, we know the net force simply has to be zero. It's going to be zero right up until you start entering that field region. And once you start to enter the field region, well, let's look at the position. If this is a square loop that has a length L, that means with respect to the center, I'm going to be right here. All right, now once you start entering the, uh, the region where there's a magnetic field, you can look at this problem kind of two different ways. One, well, there's going to be a conductor here, and you're going to move a conductor in a magnetic field region, which means there's going to be a motional EMF induced in that conductor. That's an induced voltage, and that's going to produce a current because we know that our loop has a certain resistance. The other way to kind of think about this is once the loop enters the field region over here, what happens is, well, there's going to be a change in magnetic flux inside that loop. But out here, there's no change in magnetic flux, so there's no induced EMF. So let's look at the motional EMF and the change in magnetic flux through the loop as you start entering this field region. But anywhere on this point over here, there is no force uh, required in order to uh, move this loop. Okay, so what we first want to do is we first want to analyze the motion of this loop when it's first inside this field region here. Once you're first inside this field region and the loop is moving at constant velocity, that means that the free electrons on here are going to feel a force. There's a force acting on them because they're moving in a field and they're moving at a constant velocity like this. Actually, so the electrons actually, if you draw a free body diagram on those electrons, what you're going to find is that the force on the electrons, the magnetic force, is acting down. Now, if I have a force acting down, the electrons are going to start moving down. And the electrons are going to move in the clockwise direction. But that simply means that the current, the positive current, is simply going to flow in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so we're going to have that I flows in the counterclockwise direction. To find the magnitude of the current now, well, one thing you simply can do is you can use the motional EMF. The motional EMF is simply given by VBL, and it's a square loop, so L is the length of that segment over here. We know that the loop here had a resistance R. So if we have a induced motional EMF, that there has to be equal to Ri. And now we can find the magnitude of that induced current, simply VBL divided by the resistance of the loop. All right, so we've got the direction of the current. We also now have the magnitude of the current. But let's see, if we have a positive current like this or if a current flowing up in this section, we also know that if there's a current moving in a magnetic field, there has to be a magnetic force acting on it. So let's find the direction of the magnetic force on this segment of current over here. All right, so we've got a current kind of going up. And we've got a magnetic field pointing into the page. You should remember for your class that there's a force acting on it equal to I L cross B. So let's find the direction of the force acting on 
current that's acting up. Let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so what you should find now, again, if I have a current pointing up, I have a field that's into the page, you should find that on this segment of the wire, I have a magnetic force FB that's pointing to the left. However, I'm also told that the velocity of the entire loop is constant. So that means there has to be some applied force. Somebody has to be pulling this loop through this field region. And you call this the applied force. So the applied force has to be equal to the magnetic force for this problem. And the magnetic force I can find because I know the magnitude of the current, I know the field. This is simply IL cross B or ILB sine of theta, but in this case, the angle is 90 degrees. That's the angle between the magnetic field and the current. So our applied force then, at the end we can simplify our expression. Our applied force, let's just do it down here so then I can put it on the graph, is going to be ILB. And if I substitute the expression for I, what I'm gonna find is VB squared, L squared divided by the resistance. So that's going to be the magnitude of my force. Let's call that force F1. And that force is going to exist all the way from this point when you first enter this magnetic field region all the way to when the loop is inside. So you have to apply a force in order to get this loop completely inside the field region. And here's the magnitude of the force. All right, I now want to look at this exact same problem, except now I want to look at it from the perspective of, look what happens when I move this loop inside the field region. What's happening is I'm changing the magnetic flux inside this region, inside the loop. Whenever you change the magnetic flux, you induce a current. And again, once you have induced the current, uh, then the same arguments apply. So we can use the change in magnetic flux also in order to calculate uh, the current and the force. So let's have a look on how we'd set that up for this problem. All right, as I move this loop inside, well, at this point over here, let's have a look. There's some magnetic flux going through that loop. Let's calculate what the flux looks like when there's a certain section X that's inside the field region. And part of the loop is not inside the field region. But over here, I'm gonna have some magnetic flux. And the amount of flux is simply going to be uh, the field multiplied by the area. Uh, the field, again, it's, there's an angular dependence here, but that goes, it's just a uh, cos of zero degrees in that case, so you don't have to worry about that. So the area now, what is, the field is constant. You can leave that as like that. Now the area is, it's the distance x multiplied by the length. And since we're looking at a square loop, it's simply going to be L times x. Now what I'm interested in now is the change in flux divided by how the flux changes with respect to time. So in this case here, the change in flux with respect to time, the field and the length of the loop don't change. Therefore, the only thing that's going to change is gonna be that distance x. So if you calculate the change in flux, you get BL delta x divided by delta t. Well, that's what I get for the change in flux. However, this guy over here, what does this look like? the change in x versus the change in time, well, that's simply the, the velocity in the x direction here. So at the end, I can simply write the change in magnetic flux through the loop as BL multiplied by the speed. And again, again, this is simply the induced EMF. Now, sometimes you could put a negative there, but and not too worried about the negative sign, that's just gonna tell me the direction of the current. And we'll use Lenz's law to find the direction of the current. But again, I get my same induced EMF, whether you use the motional EMF or you look at the change in flux, you get that the induced EMF is simply BLV. Now to find the direction of the current using Lenz's law, well, all you have to imagine is, think about it, uh, you want to oppose the change in flux. So you're getting more flux going through the loop and the field is going into the page. 
So what you want to do is you want to set up a current in this loop that opposes that change in flux. You don't want the flux to increase like that. And the way you do that is you want that the, the induced current produces a field that opposes that change in flux. So that would be a induced field that would be pointing up. And a field pointing out of the page would be generated by a current that's flowing in the counterclockwise direction. So now that we have the direction of the current, we have our induced EMF inside this loop. Again, you follow the same arguments. If you want to find the magnitude of the current that's induced, you simply follow the same steps as what we did. What you're going to find again now is that our force is going to be our value that we obtained before. And that value is going to exist all the way up until this point over here. All right, in this next problem now, let's look at what happens once the loop is completely inside the area where there's a magnetic field. And again, the field is uniform. So let's look at what happens. Well, what it's a little bit easier, I find, to do this section if you look at the flux going inside this loop. Once the this square loop is inside the field region, and since the field is uniform, the amount of flux through that loop is going to be a constant. So our flux, remember, is simply the field times the area and cos of zero. But you see what happens now, since the field is zero, and the area that's inside the field is constant, it's simply the area of the loop, we get a certain amount of flux, but the flux doesn't change. It's a constant. If the flux doesn't change, that means that the induced EMF has to be equal to zero. And that means that the current induced inside that loop is also zero. If there's no current, then the net force acting on the loop is zero, and the loop is simply going to move at constant velocity. Okay. So for this section over here, there is no force in order to keep that loop moving at constant velocity. All right, now let's look at the final section now when the loop is leaving the field region. So we're all the way down at the other end. Now again, I'm gonna use uh, the change in flux uh, in order to analyze this, but it's almost identical to what we did previously when we were entering the field region. Except now look what's happening. The flux is actually getting smaller. It was initially B times A, and now as I'm moving the loop out of the field region, it's getting much smaller and it's eventually gonna to go to zero. So I'm constantly changing the flux with respect to time. Now, if you just did the same argument as what we did before, you're gonna find that the change in flux with respect to time, which is my induced EMF, is going to be, again, VBL. You're gonna get the same argument as what I did before. Now, what's interesting about now, we have to find the direction of the current now. Again, for that, we apply Lenz's law. Lenz's law says, I want to oppose the change in flux. This says that the flux is getting smaller. And how would I change that? Well, I want to induce a magnetic field that it doesn't want it to get smaller. I want to induce a field, in this case, that goes into the page. And what kind of current would induce a current into the page? Well, that would be a current that is flowing up in this section, going around like this, down like this, and over here. That's a clockwise current. If I have a clockwise current I, that's going to produce a field going into the page, and that's going to oppose the change in flux. So this is going to be the direction of the current. Now look what I have over here in this section. I'm going to have a magnetic force, Fb, acting on this current. Again, our magnitude of the magnetic force is going to be ILB. However, look what's going on. What's the direction of that magnetic force? For that, you have to use the right-hand rule. And you're going to find that the magnetic force acting on this section is in that direction. But the applied force, again, this loop is moving at constant velocity. So that means acting on this loop I have an applied force that is equal and opposite to that. It's equal and opposite because it's moving at constant velocity. So you have to have FA on this side. 
All right, and you're going to find again that the magnetic force and the applied force is the same as what we had previously. This is what you get over here. It's the same force right up until that entire loop leaves the field region. And then after that, then there is no more force acting on the system. And our last step now, if we simply want to plot the current, we found the magnitude of the current. We also found that when you first enter the field region, you obtain a current that is in the clockwise direction. We're going to call that positive current. And no current when I'm the loop is completely inside that field region. There's no change in flux. And now when I leave the field region, I'm going to induce a current in the opposite direction. Let's plot, like, let's plot it like this. This is what we call the counterclockwise current. This is what we call the clockwise current. So that's going to be in opposite direction. And again, this here is the applied force. The applied force we calculated always has to oppose the magnetic force because the loop's not going to move by itself. And once, you've, once you're inducing this current, you have to keep on applying that force. Otherwise, things are no longer going to work. Um, this loop has to keep moving in order to have this induced EMF. Um, and you have to keep this force applied throughout the entire motion. All right, there you have it, folks. There's a square loop through a magnetic field. Uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit at least gave you some ideas on how to solve a problem like this or something similar. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, just send me an email or leave a comment.